Hello. Today we are going to learn about germination of seeds. Subtopics in this chapter are what is a seed, types of seeds, structure of seed and seed germination. What is a seed? A seed is the first stage in the life cycle of a plant. A seed is the mature ovule after fertilization which contains an embryonic plant stored food material for nourishment and a protective seed coat. All seeds contain a living plant in them called an embryo. Seeds also contain a small amount of food to nourish the little plant. The seed coat protects the embryo from mechanical damage until it germinates. The seed leaves or cotyledons provide the necessary food until roots and true leaves are formed. The embryo inside the seed remains in dormant stage till it finds favorable conditions to germinate. Some seeds can remain dormant up to 100 years or even more. Let's learn about the details of seed structure and seed germination. Types of seeds Monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous seeds Depending upon the number of cotyledons, there are two kinds of seeds, monocotyledonous and dicotyledonous. Monocotyledonous seed contains one cotyledon or embryonic leaf. These seeds do not separate into two halves. Example, maize, rice, wheat, coconut and grasses. Dicotyledonous seed contains two cotyledons. These seeds absorb and store the nutrients from the endosperm before the seed germinates. The cotyledons are usually thick with stored nutrients. Examples Pea, Gram, Bean, Peanut and Apple. Albuminous and Exalbuminous Seeds On the basis of the presence or absence of special food storing tissue called endosperm, seeds are also classified as albuminous and exalbuminous. In albuminous or endospermic seeds, endosperm is present and the cotyledons are thin and membranous. For example, custard apple and poppy seeds are albuminous dicot seeds, while cereals, millets and palm seeds are albuminous monocot seeds. Exalbuminous or non-endospermic seeds lack endosperm and the cotyledons are thick and fleshy as they store food. For example, gram, peam, mango and mustard seeds are exalbuminous dicot seeds, while orchids, amorphophallus and velisneria seeds are exalbuminous monocot seeds. Structure of seed There is a great variation in size, shape and structure of seeds. But the basic parts of seeds are somewhat similar. The basic structure of seed consists of cotyledons, which is food storage organs that function as first seed leaves. Epicotyl. The part of embryo above the cotyledons is called epicotyl. The epicotyl becomes the stem and leaves of the plant. Plumule. The epicotyl along with embryonic leaves is called plumule. Radical. The stem tip of the plant embryo developing into a root is called the radical. Hypocotyl. The area of plant embryo between the cotyledons and the radical. Hilum. Along the concave edge of the seed is a hilum which is a scar that marks where the seed was attached to the ovary wall. Micropyle It is a small opening on the concave side of the seed responsible for the absorption of water.
water as well as exchange of gases which takes place during germination. It is present adjacent to the hilum. Seed coat. It is a covering around the seed which protects the embryo and its food supply that is endosperm. Coleoptile. In the seeds of monocots, it is a sheath that protects the plumule as it grows out of the soil. Endosperm. It is a special food storing tissue. Structure of a monocot seed, maize grain. The structure of a monocot seed can be studied by taking an example of maize grain. A maize grain is actually a fruit in which the seed coat and pericarp of the fruit wall are fused together, forming a protective layer. That is why it is called as grain. If you look at the corn grain, you will find small light colored oval shaped area on one side. This area marks the location of embryo inside the seed. The remaining large part is endosperm which is lined by protein rich layer called aluron layer. The endosperm is rich in starch. A thin epithelium layer separates the endosperm from the embryonic part. The embryo in the maize grain consists of single cotyledon called scutellum and a radical and a plumule. The radical lies towards the pointed side of the embryonic region of the seed. It is covered by protective sheath called coleoresa. The plumule is located towards the upper side of the embryonic region opposite to radical. It is also enclosed in a protective sheath known as coleoptile. Structure of a dicot seed, bean seed. The structure of a dicot seed can be studied by taking an example of a bean seed. Beans are kidney shaped with well demarcated convex and concave sides. A bean seed is covered by testa or seed coat usually brown in color. The outer seed coat protects the embryo from mechanical damage and prevents it from drying out. Each seed has a unique seed coat which gives seeds their distinctive appearances. Lying next to testa is the tegmen. It is a thin layer that also protects the inner parts of the seed. If you look at the concave side of the bean seed, you will find distinct whitish oval scar which is called hilum. Hilum marks the area where the seed was attached to the wall of the ovary. A tiny micropyle is also situated near the hilum. Micropyle is a pore through which pollen tube enters the ovule during fertilization. Seeds absorb water through this micropyle. It also allows diffusion of respiratory gases during seed germination. Bee seed contains two cotyledons. They absorb and store the nutrients from the endosperm before the seed germinates. The cotyledons thick with stored nutrients emerge above the ground during germination and then transport the stored nutrients to the developing seedling. If you separate the two cotyledons, then between them, you will find the embryo. The embryo in bean seed contains two parts, a radical and a plumule. The radical forms the roots while plumule forms the stem and leaves of the developing plant. Let's understand the basic differences between a dicot seed and a monocot seed based on the following features. Number of cotyledons. In dicot seeds, there are two cotyledons. In monocot seed, it is one cotyledon. Size of the cotyledons. In dicot seeds, it is thick and fleshy. In monocot seeds, it's thin and narrow. Endosperm. In dicot seeds, it is usually absent. In monocot seeds, it is present. Embryo. 
in dicot seeds it is large in monocot seeds it is small pumal in dicot seeds it is large and pumal leaves are folded in monocot seeds it is very small and pumal leaves are rolled hilum and micropi in dicot seeds it is clearly visible in monocot seeds it is not visible seed germination we already know that a seed contains a dormant embryo which is inactive embryo in resting state dry seed however has all activities of life including exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide all these activities are very slow with very minute utilization of food when this seed is placed in proper conditions necessary for seed germination it becomes active and seedling is developed from the embryo this is called seed germination thus formation of seedling from embryo is called seed germination a seed will not germinate until it is exposed to certain suitable environmental conditions it must pass through a period of dormancy during which it undergoes physiological maturation conditions necessary for seed germination environmental factors such as water air and temperature help a seed in its germination process water most seeds are very dry and must absorb water to germinate water is absorbed all over the surface but mainly through the micropyle of the seed water softens the seed coat and activates the enzyme that converts starch in cotyledons or endosperm into simple sugars these sugars provide energy for the embryo to grow the seed swells ruptures the seed coat and radical elongates comes out and forms root system air containing oxygen rapid cell division and growth must occur for seed germination for which energy is required this energy is provided by oxidation of food through respiration as the embryo begins to grow the softened seed coat cracks open this enables the oxygen needed for cellular respiration to reach the embryo if the oxygen supply is not proper the seeds will not germinate this is why seeds sown very deep in the soil do not germinate temperature seeds will grow only if the temperature is suitable within a certain range a very low temperature inhibits the growth of the embryo and a very high temperature destroys the delicate tissues Generally optimum germination occurs at temperatures ranging between 25 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius in most of the seeds. Types of seed germination. There are two types of seed germination: epigeal germination and hypogeal germination. Let's find out epigeal germination. The region of axis below cotyledons is hypocotyl and the region of axis between the point of attachment of cotyledons and plumal is epicotyl. If the hypocotyl elongates rapidly comes above the soil and cotyledons are pushed above the soil it is called epigeal germination. In this the cotyledons become green and form the first leaves examples are castor bean and cotton germination in bean seed epigeal germination under favorable conditions the seed absorbs water and swells up the seed coat ruptures and radical grows downwards to form the root system and grows further there the radical forms the primary root from which 
lateral roots emerge. The hypocotyl elongates, become straight and pushes the cotyledons into the air above the soil. The two cotyledons form the first green leaves. The young leaves unfold at the tip of the epicotyl and start preparing food for the plant through photosynthesis. In this germination, the hypocotyl elongates and the germination is epigeal germination. Hypogeal germination. In this type of seed germination, the epicotyl elongates, the cotyledons remain below the soil and the plumule is carried as the tip of the elongated epicotyl. This is called hypogeal germination. Examples of hypogeal germination are pea, gram, maize, rice and mango. Germination in maize grain Hypogeal germination The seed absorbs water and swells. The radical begins to emerge by penetrating the coleoriza, protective root sheath and the fruit wall. It grows downwards to form the root system but soon dies. The epicotyl elongates and pierces out of the grain in opposite direction to coleoriza and cotyledons remain underground. The plumule pierces out of the coleoptile and grows straight upwards. The cotyledon absorbs food from the endosperm till it is exhausted. Soon, more leaves appear in the succession which start synthesizing food for the plant. In this type of germination, the epicotyl elongates but the hypocotyl does not elongate and the germination is hypogeal germination. Let's understand the differences between epigeal germination and hypogeal germination. In epigeal germination, cotyledons are pushed above the ground. In hypogeal germination, cotyledons remain underground. In epigeal germination, hypocotyl elongates. As in hypogeal germination, epicotyl elongates. Epigeal germination can be seen in seeds of castor, bean, cotton, etc. Hypogeal germination can be seen in seeds of pea, gram, maize, etc. An important point here is either epicotyl or hypocotyl elongates during seed germination. Both the epicotyl and hypocotyl of a seed never elongate together during seed germination. Let's understand about viviparous germination. In mangrove plants like Sonoracea and Rhizophora, the seed germinates inside the fruit while it is still attached to the plant. After germination, the seedling drops on the soil, develops root and grows. This type of germination is known as viviparous germination.